Airtable is a web-based database service. It's great at storing all sorts of different information in it. There is both a free and a paid plan. The free plan has been fine for me for months. You can use Airtable to keep track of all sorts of things like recipes, movies to watch, project ideas. Think of it as a web-based Excel or numbers service. If you're not sure where to start, there are awesome built-in templates for you to get going. How I primarily use it is to keep track of project ideas I want to work on. When entering a new idea, I can put in a working title for the project, then a one sentence note about my idea. Then I enter a tag. This is so that I have better organization through my table. And finally, if it's something I'm currently working on, I can add a check mark next to it. There are way more fields you can add to it if you wish. You can have more than one table in a database as well. I have a few in my video projects area. This is mostly for different kinds of videos I wanna work on. You can even link one record from one table to another. Add the field in the record editor, then select that, then pick a record from another table you wanna link to. Organizing your Airtable can be just as important as adding to it. If I want to filter all my ideas down to a category, I can build a view for that. In the top left corner, tap the view button. Here you can pick a view you've already made or make a new one. When creating a new one, you just follow the simple logic. I often make one where it just shows a specific tag. This is great when a table gets too big to scroll through. I also have a couple of databases to track media I'm interested in. My video games table allows me to put in the game I wanna play, what platform it's on, when it'll be released, and if I already own it, there's a checkbox for that. Airtable is also great for working with others. For my podcast, A Slab of Glass, we have a shared database. We use this to track topic ideas and guests we wanna have on. This is a great way for us to share ideas and for them not to get lost in something like iMessage. The biggest reason why I use Airtable is because it can be automated and not just any kind of automation. It has a full web API. So let's take a look at a couple of ways I use that. There's one main shortcut that I use a lot. That's this one right here, the new video idea. This basically asks for a video title, a note, then it runs it and then it adds it to Airtable. I have a new one right here. This is expense tracking. I'm just putting this together right now for 2020. It's gonna basically be for business expense tracking. I know not very exciting, but it's actually kind of interesting on how it's put together. Uh, I do have another Airtable one right here. This one's just kind of a basic Airtable shortcut, just kind of helps you put together the stuff like the API key and things like that. I will make sure this one is in the description below. But I wanna walk through building a shortcut using the Airtable API. I've had a lot of people ask me to do a video around using APIs and shortcuts, so this is it. So let's let's walk through it. So. The first things first, let's go into Safari. I've already logged into my Airtable base right here. Um, we're gonna do an expense tracking one because I think this is kind of just general knowledge that I think a lot of people can use. And then you can take that and convert it to whatever you want it to be. Uh, so we're gonna hit add a base and you could start from scratch or start with a template. So my expense tracking one, I'll show you this because I haven't put anything in it just yet. Um, this was just a test. Uh, this is actually based off the expense tracking template Airtable offers. Uh, I deleted quite a few things that I just don't need um, and kind of pared it down to the stuff that I think I'll end up using. Uh, this is a, just a test in here that you can see, but my idea is that I'm gonna put one of these together for 2020 and so I can track every, all my purchases throughout the year. So let's go add a base, start with template, and then we'll do expense tracking okay cool and we'll just use this template okay so now that we have expense tracking in here let's go ahead and just open this up uh, it's gonna kind of go through all the stuff here. Okay, I'm gonna leave these in here. These are just the sample things it comes with. Uh, this is kind of the view and everything the template is built around. So now we have our table right here, expense tracking. Let's build our shortcut. So let's put this in split view here new shortcut okay so out of these categories there's four main things that i want that we're going to go for so uh we're going to start off with some ask for inputs so the first one is going to be the item name this will be for the short description let's 
do another ask for input. We're gonna make this the total question mark. Then I also want to make sure there's a date in there. So we're gonna do uh, the date action. We're gonna have it get the current date. But then we also need a format date because there is a very specific way uh, Airtable wants that date. And Shortcuts actually has a nice um, shortcut to it. Nah, that's funny. Uh, and it's actually the default. So you wanna make sure date is short and time is short. And then one last ask for input. And this is gonna be like any notes or anything like that. So as you can see, it has three things it's gonna ask for and then it's gonna also get the date. Um, one thing I do wanna change is over here, let's make this bigger. Um, Airtable does not work very well in split view. It's kinda, it's kinda unfortunate, but you can use the app for that. But there's gonna be some things we need. That's why I have it in so far as there's gonna be some stuff we need to pull from the web view. So, so I'm gonna make total here. I'm gonna click on this and customize the field. I was having some issues getting currency to work with shortcuts, and I kind of realized, honestly, I don't need it. I'm just gonna be tracking individual items. I'm not looking for it to do any addition or anything like that. So I'm just gonna set it to single line text um, and uh, just kind of get rid of that other stuff. I don't need, um, I don't, I don't need it to convert to currency or anything like that. If you do, maybe play around with shortcuts a little more. But I was just having some major issues with it getting that to work. Okay, so there's two things we need from this view right here, from the uh, Safari web view of Airtable. So let's go into here and you click on this person up here. We need to get the API key and we need to get the URL to this table. Now it's not just this URL up here at top. It's completely different. So I'm gonna click on this person right here. We're gonna go to account. Let's go open up the separate page. Now to get your API key, you're gonna click on this. In fact, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna regenerate my API key so it won't work for you guys if you try. So this is my API key right here. Every API key is different based on the account. You can just copy it right here. And the API key is basically how the shortcut will authenticate against Airtable and say, hey, this is who this person is. So they, they're allowed into this table. So what I did to save my Airtable API key is I use this app Pretext right here. And then I went into shortcuts created a folder called API keys, and I already moved all my non-Airtable API keys out of here, so we're just gonna focus on Airtable. And I made a file called Airtable API key. Just create document, make sure it's text document, call it Airtable API key, or whatever you wanna call it, but just make sure you know the name because we will need that, uh, But and make sure it's .txt. Uh, and then all I did was just paste that code in there. This is so that we can call back and get the Air, Airtable API key anytime we need it. You don't have to go get it every single time. Uh, usually I've got about four other API keys that I work with. I moved them to a different folder because I didn't want them to accidentally get out and I have to go through and regenerate a bunch of accounts. So now that you have your Airtable API key saved, um, we need to get the URL. So what you can do is go over here to where it says Airtable API. This is all of your tables right here. It'll list everything. And this is where you can get the documentation for each. Now, whichever one you click on, it's specific to that. So make sure you click on the right one. So we're gonna go to this expense tracking one. This is the one we're working in. Scroll down. And this is some of the information we are gonna need. Okay, so let's go back to shortcuts here. So first up, we're gonna do get file. And we're gonna do iCloud Drive, and we're gonna do uh, sh turn off show document picker because we saved it in the shortcuts folder. So we have the API keys folder, and then and then we have Airtable API key.txt. So this right here is our path with our file so remember i said you need your file name this is where you get your this is where you put your file name in don't forget to put the uh, file extension down at the bottom that's important okay so now that we have that all in there that's what it'll authenticate against now we need to get the url so we need the url of our table so we're going to put the url action down here and we're going to scroll down so down here under authentication there is this url right here so where it starts at https 
and ends in log. And the reason why mine ends in log is because that's the name of this table. So I'm going to copy that right there and then go ahead and paste that in. So this is the URL. Now we have the API that it's going to authenticate against and the URL of the table. But now we need to tell it what to do. So we're going to do get contents. So we're going to do get contents of URL. And so it's going to get this URL. So we're going to hit show more right down here. And we're going to do a few things here. So first up, we need to change this method to be post. And then we need to hit header. So we're going to add a new header. And this is where the authentication comes in. So you need to type in, basically, we need to get this information right here. So you need authorization. So we need to put authorization in the key area right here. And then text, we need to type this right here. So bearer, B-E-A-R-E. ER space and then we need to use the magic variable button right here to select file and then just hit uh done. okay so this basically says what what the key is so it's going to authorize then it's going to authorize against our api key right here so that's what we need right there but now we need to uh link it to our ask for inputs and date right here so we're going to hit under the request body, leave it as JSON. We want it as JSON, but we're going to hit new field and we want dictionary. So for key, we type in fields and all of this information is in this documentation right here. I'm kind of just giving you the abbreviated version, but if you want to go into much more detail, read the Airtable documentation. It is very, very good. Okay. So we're going to come in here to items and hit new item text. Okay, so for key, we have to make it match exactly what these uh, titles are called. So short description, total, date and time, things like that. So that's where key needs to go. So, uh, so short description. And then for text, we need to do magic variable and link it to where we want item name. So that's going to be what the short description category is. So there's item one. So we need to hit and we need another one. So next one's going to be total. Again, magic variable. Go to the total section. The next one is going to be date and time. And then magic variable again. And if you want to add more categories, you can. Again, it just has to match the exact spelling, exact grammar, everything just has to match. Uh, so for date and time, we're gonna pick the format date. And then one more, we're gonna do notes. And then one last magic variable here. And then we're gonna hit provided input. Okay, so now we have all four fields that we want. So again, just a quick review, we have our ask for inputs and date. This is we'll get gather our information. This is where it gets our API key to authenticate, the URL of the table, and this is kind of what puts that all together. So let's go ahead and run this. So we're just gonna call this test one, hit okay. The total, we'll call it 1234. We can even put a dollar sign in front if you wanna like make sure everything's consistent. And then note this, this is a test. And then the first time you run this, it'll ask this, just go ahead and hit okay. And then we get this message down here. And if we come over here to our Airtable API, so we come over here to our Airtable database and here's the information. So it has the short description, uh, the total, the date and time, and the notes. We can add a category, who paid, if need be, a receipt photo, item photo, whatever. You, you can add that later. Um, since this is a web API, we don't have to open the app once we're done. There we go to get our new stuff. Um, so there is our new item right there. So that, that's kind of it. That's working with the API. I'll make sure I link, um, uh, my, uh, my 
easy to use shortcut for working with the Airtable API in the description below. But this is it. This is all you have to do. It's actually fairly short for something that seems so complicated. It's pretty short. It's just remembering where to get all that information. Um, so, you know, be sure to, you know, put your Airtable API key in a place that you can remember. I'm going to put also in the description a link to the Automators podcast. They did a whole episode around Airtable and how they were using it. It's a really good episode. Um, it really got me really excited about Airtable, so I'll make sure that is linked below as well. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.